Jesus is meeting with you during this conference. And to some, we might just be singing, you are holy. Some might not understand what we are doing, but all of heaven is right now singing, you are holy. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. So while they are singing, if we want to experience and encounter God, we need to meet Him. The mic is feedbacking. We need to meet Him. But the way we are gonna meet Him is through our intimacy. And worship is one of the most powerful ways to intimately connect with Him. So while we are singing, you are holy. Don't think we are just singing. If you are getting tired, push past your flesh. We are going out of the flesh realm and we moving into the spiritual realm. We moving into spiritual dimensions because what God has for this nation, for this end time, He needs a spiritual folk. He does not need a carnal, fleshly woman or man that is focused on the natural. We are not natural beings. We might have a natural body, but we are of the Spirit. Life is spiritual. So while we singing to Him, you are holy, holy, He's holy. He's worthy to receive all the honor, all the praise. This conference, the mic is very bad, guys. Just help me with it, please. This whole conference, people might have been wondering, what are they gonna talk about in the throne room? This whole conference is about Jesus. It's all, but not just, not just this conference. You guys can sit down, thank you not just this conference, but life as we know it is all about, you guys can sit down, thank you. I know we are a bit full. Um, we knew it was gonna be full and I know women are hungry. I know women are ready to step into what God has for them. It is not by mistake. I know it might be a little bit uncomfortable for some, but we get past the flesh and we move into the spiritual realm. Yes, it is hot. Make sure tomorrow that you bring some water. If you don't have any, it might be uncomfortable, but just when you're feeling uncomfortable, think about what Jesus went through for you to be able to sit here. He didn't have it easy. He didn't have it nice. He didn't have it comfortable. It was hell on earth that He went through so that you can be sitting here. Amen. Um, but now I forgot what I wanted to say there, but this is the time and we all know it. And I've said it every time I'm on the pulpit that this is the end time. God is ready for a move, but He needs a people who are ready to move with Him. He needs a man and a woman. And I'm probably gonna mostly just mention the women because it's a women's conference, but men and men watching us online, welcome to everybody watching us online. But men and women, he needs a person who is saying, I'm willing. If you, if you look at Isaiah in Isaiah 6, God wanted to know who is available for him to use. Isaiah said, use me. Hello. <laughs> Isaiah said, use me. He was made himself available. So we need to make ourselves available. And I'm gonna talk about tonight. Tonight is more, how can I say it? It's, it's definitely the foundation. The mic is really not good up here. I don't know if you wanna come stand on the stage and maybe just listen. So it's very like um, thin and like feedbacking. And so there's no, I don't wanna say bass, but it's very like thin, so I feel like I can't really talk. I have to really whisper, not to make it screech. So um, what was I saying? Oh, I said tonight we're gonna talk about, um, must I take it closer? Okay, Pastor David always tells me not to have it so close. <laughs> okay, so tonight I'm gonna talk about um, my father's house. And tonight's message is the foundation for tomorrow. So I know that there's some women who can't make it for tomorrow's sessions, 
But even if you can just attend one or if you don't attend, it's okay. But make sure that you join us online or listen to it afterwards because if you're missing either tonight or tomorrow, you're kind of missing the full picture. So like I said, tonight is gonna be the foundation and I'm gonna talk about the different rooms in my Father's house. And I want us to understand that the rooms in the Father's house, so what I'm gonna do today is I'm going to um, just mention, it is, um, I'm not, it's when I explain the rooms in my Father's house, I want you to make sure that you don't look at it in the natural. Even though I'm ex explaining it in the natural, it's not a physical thing. So when I get there, I'll explain to you. So it's not like you're really going to walk into a lounge. It's a spiritual, I'm explaining in the natural so that you can understand what is taking place in the spiritual. Amen? Are you ready? Are you excited? I know women getting together. It is not a mistake that women will get together because women are hungry. Women are connected to God. God knew that He needed to use a woman to bring Jesus into this world. And if it is all about Jesus, then you better know it's all about you as well. He found you of value. He found you of purpose to bear and to carry the very Son of the living God who gave Himself for you and I so that we can be reconnected to the Father in glory. This platform is a place where we glorify and honor the King of Kings, our Lord of Lords, the Son of the Living God. So let's give Him and welcome Jesus into this place. So give Jesus the greatest shout of praise you've ever given Him before. Give Jesus the greatest shout of praise for what He's done in your life. Amen. I know we have hungry women because they were lining up already, ready to get into the building at, I think it was 4.30 already or 4 o'clock. They're already waiting and they didn't realize that we're not gonna open the building <laughs> too early. Um, but as I told you before, and I think I said it on the live stream, that God has a way of multiplying space. So to some we might feel squashed, to some we might be sitting on the floor, and this is why you need to sow into the Vision Fund. Amen. <laughs> That wasn't planned, but this is why, because God has a move and He's chosen a people. He's chosen many other churches, many other ministries, but He's chosen places. And for that to take place, that God has ordained for this ministry, through this ministry, we need a bigger building. So if you are here, so into the, into the building fund. And at the right time, we're going to do it. We're not too stressed about the finances because we know God will provide. It's not something that we worry about. It'll just happen. Everything in this ministry just happened. It's not something that we had to slave for, that we had to toil for. No, it was all that, I understand what's happening. It was all given through Him and by Him for the work that He has ordained for this ministry. And the thing is, is that most of us sitting in here is all part of that. And for those who are from other churches, God has ordained and destined for you to be there for the work that He has for that ministry. We are not the only church. We're not the only ministry. We're not the best and the be all. No, we are just a hungry, available, usable, chosen vessels that God uses. We have chosen to surrender ourselves. We have chosen to die to ourselves for the work and the mandate that He has given us. Amen. All right, so let's get into this. 
So I'm going to uh, go to, I want us to, for those of you who have notes, write down notes. You're going to be excited about the different rooms. And um, I have notes and I don't have notes and I have a Bible and it's just going to come out how it does because it's not I who, who speaks, it is not me, it is the Holy Spirit who speaks through me. Amen. Amen. So we're ready. So let's go to Revelations uh, 4, chapter 4. Revelations chapter 4. I'm going to read it out of my Bible just because that is a bit far. You guys can follow on the screen. Okay, so Revelations 4, verse 1. After these things, I looked and behold a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, come up here and I will show you things which must take place after this. Immediately I was in the spirit and behold, a throne set in heaven and one sat on the throne. And he who sat there was like a jasper, like a satirist stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald. Around the throne were 24 thrones and on the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting clothed in white robes and they had crowns of gold on their heads. And from the throne proceeded lightnings and thunders and voices. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Before the throne, there was a sea of glass like crystal. And in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures full of eyes in the front and in the back. The first living creature was like a lion. The second living creature like a calf. The third living creature had a face like a man. And the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. And the, uh, sorry, that's, yes. And the the four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within. And they, listen to this, and they do not rest day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is to come. Whenever the living cr creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him, sits on the throne and worships him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will, they exist and were created. So this is where John went up into heaven, into the throne room. But what I want to focus on is where the four living creatures, they do not rest day or night saying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is to come. The thing is, is we love worship, most of us. Some people don't, but for those of us who really love worship, you know when a new song comes along, you end up loving this song. And that song goes on repeat, and you sing it over and over and over, and eventually you know the words without even them coming up, but you sing the song over and over and over. But then a month goes by after you've sang this song so much, you've listened to this song so much that you actually get over the song, and you're like, oh, not this song again. Why do we have to sing this one again? Really? Does the, did the band or did the worship have to go into that one again? I overdid it. I'm over it. And we get over these songs and we get over singing these songs. Who's guilty? I'll wave my hand because I'm just like that. But the thing is, is here in heaven, now I'm not saying there's not other songs in heaven, but according to Revelations 4, what was here, is that the four living creatures were singing over and over, day and night, non-stopping, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. 
So the thing is, imagine I, if I get to heaven one day, I can just imagine I'm going to sing there and I'm going to stand there and I'm going to sing. Okay, I'm just talking now as if I was me now, not as my glorified self. But if I had to go to heaven, I'd sing it and I'd sing it and you guys would sing it. And, but there'll come a time where you're like, okay, this is enough now. <laughs> I've had it enough. But why can these living creatures and all of heaven sing day and night, holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, the one who is and is to come. How can they do this over and over? The thing is, is that, before I get to that, the thing is, is that the Bible says that um, Jesus wants us to worship in spirit and in truth. He wants us to worship with intention. He wants us to worship with and have a focused, intentional worship for Him every time. But these living creatures who are in heaven and all of heaven can sing this over and over and over. But why can they sing this over and over and over? Day and night, day and night. The thing is, is that every time that they singing holy, 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 to Jesus who sits on the throne, every time they sing in that moment, Jesus reveals a different level of His holiness. So in all of heaven, as much as what, He wants to meet with us and take us into different levels of Him and show us different levels of Him in heaven. So they'll sing holy and boom, God will show them a different level of, of His holiness. Holy, boom, and God will show them a different level of His holiness. And for all eternity, Jesus and God's holiness is just going to get more holy and more holy holy and he'll reveal himself more and more and more and more to all of us so when you are standing in a place and you are worshiping God stop standing just standing still there this is a place where God wants to meet you where he wants to reveal his holiness to you we get so tired in worship but the Bible said He wants us to worship Him in spirit and in truth, focus, intentional worship. And when we do that, He will reveal Himself more and more. And then when, because what I'm going to talk about today and what I'm going to explain is the different rooms in the throne room. I'm explaining the different levels of intimacy with God through prayer. So in the same way that our worship gets monotonous and we get, how can I say, we just do it out of routine. We do it out of um, having, just doing it because of religion and all that kind of stuff. The same way happens with our prayer life. So a lot of us have a passion to pray and just when God touches you and He gives you a fresh infilling, you pray and you're passionate because remember, prayer is another way of um, increasing your intimacy with God. In the same way that worship is, so is prayer. So we get so tired and we get into a place of where we pray monotonously, where prayer gets boring. But the thing is, is that when, when you have an excitement inside of you for prayer, it stirs you up. And then, and you get to a place of, or when you're at a place where you can't wait to meet with Him, you go home and you, or you're at work and you're dying to just go spend time with Him. I'm at a place in my life where I don't want to do anything. I literally don't want to do anything, but just sit in my room. And I know that uh, for some people that don't understand that, I understand. But after this conference, the way that Jesus is going to meet with you here, your life from here will be different. It is a different, and after tonight, you will have a better understanding. Because the thing is, many people, when it comes to the rooms of the Father's house, people don't understand that you can encounter Him any moment. We think that the only way that we can encounter Him or we can experience God or have time with Him is if we are in a third heaven experience. So if we are in a moment where we're actually physically in heaven, 
where God has taken us up into heaven and we're actually walking around in heaven, or if Jesus comes and stands in your room, or if an angel is there, people think that that's the only way that we can encounter him. That's the only way that he speaks to us. But no, we have in John, I think it's John 14, verse one to two. Let's go there quickly and I'm gonna show you something. John 14, one to two. It says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, other translations say many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. So that scripture shows and proves how there are different rooms which relates to the different levels of intimacy that Jesus wants to experience with us. And people think, now I'm sure that some of you sitting here are thinking, yes, I wonder if I've entered even into one of those rooms. Some might be thinking I've probably entered about one or two. But the thing is, is tonight I want to show you how we so easily miss an encounter with God. How we so easily miss that intimate moment that He wants to meet with us because we think that it's only in one room and how you think that you meet with Him is one room, but that's only one level of intimacy that He has with you. So I'm gonna go through the rooms and um, the first room that I'm gonna talk about is the, <laughs> so if you walk into the Father's house, what is the first room that you see? Um, I don't know, you're probably thinking, what is the first room that you see in your house? But the first room that you see when you enter the Father's house is the living room. So it's the TV room. That room, the living room, if you walk into it and you look at it and you see it, what you will see in front of you is you will see this massive, humongous, comfortable couch the most comfortable couch you would have ever imagined, filled with pillows and blankets for you to get snuggly. You'll have a very nice coffee tail, a table decorated, and you'll have your coffee and your tea, and you'll have this gigantic flat screen TV in front of you. Some people are sitting on the couch, some people are standing around the couch, and everybody's watching this TV and they focus on this TV. And what do they see on this TV? They see commercials. They see promises that God has for us. They see all the promises where you come to church and you listen to everything that God has for you. You just listen and you hear, this is the promise that God has for me. So these commercials that are playing on the TV is all the promises that God has for you. It is the place where you come to talk to God. It's actually the room, so it's the, the living room, but you can say it and define it as the, the room of prayer and supplication. It is where... You say, where Jesus says, and you can write it down if you want the scriptures, but 1 Peter 5 verse 7, cast your cares onto me for I care for you. It is the place where you go to talk and to pray for yourself. You go in this room and you talk to Jesus about yourself. You're watching everything that he has for you. And then you're just praying and you focus on yourself. So your prayer is focused on you, on what your petitions for your family, on the, the desires and the wants that you want for your family. And what happens is that a lot of Christians and a lot of people get stuck in the living room where they only focus and worry about what God has for them. They stay at a place of where they only pray and they only connect with God because of what they want from Him, what they need, what they want Him to do for Him. And what happens is they actually become spiritual couch potatoes because they go nowhere else. They do nothing else. They enter no other room. So that's the living room. The second room is what you call the kitchen. And if you look at the kitchen, if you walk into this kitchen, what you will see is a messy kitchen. You will see the pots and the pans that are piling up in the, in the basin. You will see flour lying all over. You'll see plates filled with food and some plates are still empty. You'll see food cooking 
cooking on the stove where it's boiling, you'll see that the bread baker that is baking the bread is not working. So you're wondering what's happening. You see the lady or man, but you see the lady standing in the kitchen with the apron on, worrying about the people that are coming, worrying about the people that she needs to feed, that she needs to give um, food to, to bread to, uh, all these things. So it's a real messy, dirty place. But what does this represent? So the kitchen is the room of ministry. It is where we serve God, where you give Him everything, where you do stuff for God. In Luke 10 is the story about Martha. It is literally where you see Martha. This is what you will see if you see the kitchen, where you're just working and scurrying. And a lot of people just focus so much on this. This is the place where you are anointed for work, but they focus only on the kitchen. And when they go into the Father's house, they only go into the kitchen because they feel they need to work all the time. And it's a very honorable place to be. A lot of people don't want to be there. But the thing is, is you need to get out of the kitchen as well. Amen. Then the third room we're going to go into is the dining room. And the dining room, if you walk into this dining room, you see a huge banquet-like table, like a knight's table that is filled with, as far as you can see, there's chairs. And there's two thrones at the end, like king-like chairs at the end of each side of the table. And this table is so filled with anything that you can see. The bread of life, rivers of living water, you see the honey, you see the milk, you see the meat of the word, you see the wine that is the wine, the new wine that is on the table. And you see everything is there. And this is the place where Jesus invites you to dine with him. I think it's Revelations uh, 22 verse 7 where it says that Jesus will dine with you. It is the place in Psalms 34 8 that talks about taste and see that the Lord is good. It's, it, sorry, it's Revelations 3 verse 20. Revelations 3 verse 20 that talks about um, that how Jesus wants to dine with you. It is the place. So this is the room of experience. It is the room of manifestation where He manifests Himself to you. It is the room of renewal where you are renewed in your strength. It is the room of revival where a reviving takes place. In the same way that you can think in the natural, how when you eat, you are filled and you are strengthened. This is the place where, remember what I said, every room you go in there through prayer. It is the time that you spend with Him through prayer and intimacy. So it is the room of encountering God. Amen? Amen. So let's go. I'm just going. I don't want to take too long tonight because I want everybody to get home, rest for tomorrow. But let's get into the fourth room. And the fourth room is the storage room. Now, when I explain to you what the storage room is, I think a lot of people are going to go into their place of prayer and intimacy and be like, Jesus, I'm in the storage room. Come and do what you need to do with me in the storage room. So the storage room, if you look at the storage room and you open the door, what you will see is treasures. You will see this massive treasure chest filled with gold and diamonds and silver and rubies and emeralds and sapphire and every beautiful stone that you can think of. This room is filled with all the treasures. It is filled with every beautiful thing that you can think of. And it's so full that it's overflowing that when you open the door, you literally, all this gold and silver will just start flooding out of the door. So what is the room, the storage room? It is the room of revelation. The revelation of God. It's the room of Isaiah 11 that talks about the spirit of counsel, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge, and the spirit of revelation. It is your Matthew 13. I'm not going to read the scripture, but write it down and go read it at home. It's your Matthew 13, 44 to 52. It is your Matthew 16, verse 17 that says, Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but it is by my Father who is in heaven. 
who's revealed it to you, revelation that comes straight from the throne room of God. It is revelation that is revealed to you. It is a place where you go in intimacy, where you don't have to go study. You don't have to try and find everything. You just go into this place and a revelation download. It is the room where revelation is downloaded from heaven. You don't have to work for it. It just comes. How can some people, especially us, Ministers' wives, we understand that our husbands just has favor in the storage room where they can just wake up, they get one scripture, and they stand here, and there's just revelation that flows out of their mouth. It is the storage room. It is the place of spiritual revelation downloaded. Amen? Amen. So the fifth room is my favorite room. But when I was preparing this and I was listening to it, When I first heard this room, I thought to myself, and I actually said, I'm like, God, I'm sorry that I haven't been here because I didn't understand. And what I want you guys to understand today is that every room that I'm explaining, I've already explained some of the rooms and I'm going to carry on explaining. And a lot of you sitting here will realize, but yo, I actually had a moment of where I had a visitation with God and I missed it because I didn't know that He was there. So the fifth room is the study room. If you open the door to this room, what you will see is this huge room, really big room. And from bottom to top, all the way is just books and books and books, like a a huge library feel, where there's just books and books and books and books everywhere. And in the middle of this room, you have this big study table. And on this table, there's a chair that's so comfortable. And you have the history, you have the history books, you have the eschatologies, and you have the books on faith, the books on wisdom, the books on healing, the books on revelation, the books on everything that you can think of. Every book and everything that God is about is in this study room. And a lot of people don't want to go into the study room. It is the place or the room of meditating on the word day and night. Joshua 1 verse 8. Meditating on His word day and night. It is discipline in the word. It is your place of discipline in the word. Where your relationship with God is in the word. Your life is in the word empty vessels because what I was going to say is that a lot of people don't want to be in the study they only want to be in the storage room but the thing is is that an empty vessel cannot receive the revelation so if you want to go into the storage room and receive the revelation the spirit of counsel might understanding wisdom and knowledge all these things that we always pray for we like quote our prayer and we say it every day, God, give me the spirit of counsel. Give me the spirit of might, of wisdom, understanding, knowledge, revelation, the fear of the Lord. But you cannot receive the revelation from heaven if you've got nothing to take it from. You have to study and your life has to become a study You have to stay a student of the Word where you study the Word so that when the time comes and God needs to use you in a moment, because in the Revelation room, that is where the prophetic words come from. That is where the prophetic messages come on. So if you want to minister to somebody and reach out to somebody and really, really, truly minister to somebody, you do it from the storage room. But you need to have been in the study to be able to download the revelation from the storage room. Amen? Amen. Amen. So the sixth room, I'm sure some of you are wondering how many rooms, but I'm nearly there. And I love it because what I'm doing, and there's many more. I'm just mentioning a few. And there's many more. But the reason why I want to mention all of them, and not just some, is so that you guys can realize how often there's a moment for you to meet with Jesus. And that you can see, but just what you think is something insignificant or something that's not really 
um, you know, doing much. It is actually doing it if you would just understand what you are doing in that moment. Amen. So the sixth room is the rec room. The rec room. And if you open the door to the rec room, what you will see is you will see pool tables and table, table tennis tables and um, foosball tables and that other thing that you, air hockey. <laughs> and you will see game arcades. You will see dance floors. You will see everything fun that you can think of. If you had to see it, you would think of it as a youth room. But this is the room of joyous celebration. It is the place of worship where you come to sing and dance and praise. Sometimes we look at people who are singing and dancing and praising. You don't understand that right there they are encountering God. It is the place, come on, it is the place in, like in Psalms 22 verse 3 where God inhabits the praises of His people. It is John 4 verse 23 to 24 where it says that worship God in spirit and in truth. So a lot of times we think that when we at church just praising and worshiping, we just kind of like doing it. But you're missing an encounter that He has for you right there. Worship Him in spirit and in truth. Amen intentional, focused worship and praise. So the seventh room is what you call the bathroom. And obviously we can think this one is kind of like self-explanatory, but if you go into the bathroom, this is the room of repentance. It is the place where the washing of the water takes place. It is the place of John 1 verse 9. If we confess, He is faithful and just to purify us from unrighteousness. It is the place where you go to be cleansed. It is the place where you go to be made new and fresh. But unfortunately, what happens with a lot of Christians is they think that they've done it once and they don't need to go again. And what happens is they become so constipated that they are so full of that. <laughs> and I don't mean physically, I mean like in their behavior and everything. <laughs> but you get some Christians who feel like they never have to go in there. I'm like, I don't need to forgive my brother. I don't need to let this one go. I don't need to do that. I don't need to do that. I don't need to repent. I've already repented. And then you get other Christians, other people who go into the bathroom and they've been washed, they've been cleansed, they've been forgiven, they've actually made their hair nice, they've cleaned their face, they've dressed themselves up and they're all right. But when they look in the mirror, they cannot see the forgiveness. They cannot see that they've been cleansed. So they cannot get out of the bathroom to go into any of the other rooms because they still feel guilty. They still feel shame. They still feel condemnation. Yet they cannot see that by the blood that was shed on the cross for us, you are forgiven. You are made whole. You are made new. And they get stuck. And every time they go into a place of intimacy with Him, they go into the bathroom. They run in there. You eventually get to a place of where you just want to knock on this bathroom and be like, excuse me, just get out of there already. Really, for us, we some people, they just cannot accept that they've been forgiven. They cannot accept that Jesus has set them free. He paid a high price so that they can be forgiven, so that they can be set free, but they cannot. So every time they go into their place of prayer, they go before Him. Jesus, I repent. Father, I repent. Forgive me of my sins. Yes, we do need to do that. But don't only go into your time of prayer and intimacy with Him, going in a, into the, the bathroom where you have to repent and cleanse yourself. Amen? Amen? So the eighth room, I'm nearly done. I think I have two more. The eighth room is the basement. So if you think about a basement, we in South Africa don't really have basements, but all of us have seen Home Alone and all of us have seen, <laughs> 
some American films of where they have basements. And if you think of the basement, what people do there is they just store everything. And it, all your rubbish, and I said to somebody that our basement is like our garage, where you just store everything. Everything just goes in there and you know you need to clean it out, but you don't want to clean it out. And Saturday comes when you have the time, you think to yourself, I'm going to do it today. And then you don't do it today. <laughs> because you know how much work it is. There's so much work in the basement. And the thing is, is the basement is, if you look at the American films, you see that the basement is always the room that they show last. It is always the room where you open the door. You actually don't want people to go in there because it's scary, it's dark, it's a dreaded room. And you go down the stairs and it's like creepy and scary. And like I said, it's dark and you don't really want to go in there. But the basement, what is the basement? The basement is the room of intercession. It is the room of intercession. If you have not been called as an intercessor, you will dread having to go into the basement because you know there's a lot of work that takes place in the basement. You want to rather be in the living room where you can pray for yourself, where you can pray for your needs, your wants, your desire. God, I need this. My family needs this. I need to be blessed. And you don't really want to go into the basement because you don't want to have to pay a price to pray for somebody else, to pray for the nation and pray for the king and pray for the queen and pray for, you know, Titani um, Obistrot. And you don't want to, you don't want to do that. So a lot of people don't go into the room of intercession. But on the other hand, some people just go into the place of intercession. Every time they go and spend time with God, they go straight into session, praying for this, praying for that. And it's honorable. It's great. But you cannot live in the basement. It is dark. It is cluttered. It is moldy. It is, when I say that, that's how it is. So you go there, but then you come out. You have to be renewed in the dining room as well. You have to get into the bedroom as well. You have to get into the lounge as well and just be reminded of what God has for you. You have to get into the storage room. You have to get into the study. So not just stay in the basement. Amen? Amen. Then the ninth room is what you call the trophy room. And the trophy room is self-explanatory, but it's the room where, you're rewar- where it's filled with rewards. If you open the door, you just see trophies and badges and sashes and all the kind of rewards that you can ever imagine is in this reward room, in the trophy room. And when you go into there, that is why some people are just so blessed. They've been in this room and God has rewarded them with spiritual things. He's rewarded them with physical things as well. They've earned those rewards and those trophies. And then the last room is, well, the second last, but I'm not going to get into the last one tonight. But the last room that I'm going to get into, and it's the ninth or the tenth room, is the bedroom. The bedroom is your room of intimacy. If you open the door to the bedroom, you will see one of those big wooden beds that go up high and it has that beautiful white draping, white bedding. Everything in this room is white. The bedding, the pillows, the floor, the carpets, everything. And in this room is where Jesus is. In this room is where you meet with him, where you encounter him. It is the room like John 13, 23, the room where I come like John the beloved and I lay my head on the chest of Jesus and I look into his face. It is the room of songs and Solomon where kiss me with the kisses of your mouth. It is the Isaiah uh, 62 verse 5, married to the bride. It is the place of intimacy. It is the place of romance, of love, of connection. It is a real deep place. But I'm not going to expand on that because Pastor Maria is going to get into the bedroom tomorrow morning. And she's going to take you into deeper levels and explain things to you there on how to actually enter and be in the dining, uh, in the bedroom with Jesus. 
And then tomorrow after her, I'm going to go into another room, which is the throne room. And I'm going to explain to you and I'm going to talk to you about the throne room. But that is for tomorrow night. But what I'm trusting God for, for this conference, is that He meet, that Jesus meets with you on a level and in a way that you've never encountered Him before. In a room and in a place of intimacy that you've never met with Him before. And that He comes and meets with you to set you apart for what He has ordained for us. If there's anybody walking on this earth that especially those that are saved, especially those that have given their life to Christ and chosen to set themselves apart for Him. If you think that we are still living in an ordinary day-to-day life, you're making a mistake. There's no more time for that. That is why God is revealing so much to us. That is why He's sharing so many of His secrets, but He will not share His secrets Um, with those who do not love Him. The Bible says that He shares His secrets and His mysteries with those who love Him. So if He's not sharing His secrets and His mysteries with you, question yourself, do you really love Him? And you might love Him, but are you showing Him? Are you proving it? The other scripture in the Bible says that do not cast your pearls before the swine. So if God is not revealing his pearls to you, are you a swine? I don't know, that's for you to answer. But the thing is, is that this is the time where women are going to rise up. There's so many women who's been put down, who's been scrambled upon. But this is the time where God is raising you up. Because the fact that you are here means that He has a purpose and a mission that only you can fulfill. There's nobody else who can fulfill what God has ordained for you. And if you do not fulfill it, then He'll pass it on to somebody else. But let Him not pass you by this conference. Let you not leave this conference without Him meeting you and encountering you to take you where he has for you there's many people who's crying out God I want to do something for you but what do I do for you I'm going to talk about that Sunday night (laughs) Um, but there's so many women who are desperate And I want you to take what you are learning this conference and apply it. This conference, God already ordained for this conference end of last year. He already spoke to me about this conference then. I didn't understand it at that time. I just took note. I didn't understand why everything had to be white. And it was a mission to do all of this. It was expensive to do all of this. But I was, cre- without knowing it, I was creating a place for Jesus to come and meet with us. It is done in excellence. It is done where He can come and meet with us. And tonight when you go home, we're about to end. But tonight when you go home, I want you to stay sensitive. If you want to go home tonight and cry before Him, If you want to go into the bathroom, go into the bathroom tonight and make sure that you get out of there so that tomorrow morning when you get in here, that you can go into the bedroom and you can go into the throne room with Him. Get through the bathroom. Get out of the bathroom. Get out of the other rooms tomorrow because tomorrow He is meeting with you here. So prepare yourself tonight. Don't go home and just do anything and go scream at your cat and kick your dog and, you know, tune your husband for whatever. Go home and prepare yourself for what he has encountered or what he has ordained for tomorrow, the encounter that he has for you. And I'm serious about this. With everything inside of me, I'm trying to hold myself back. I didn't think too much about it when I said let's do two services or let's do two days. 
But I understand everything of my life recently, or if I can say most things of my life is so led that a lot of times I don't understand it. I don't know what I'm doing, but I've just learned to listen. I've just learned to do, and I'm still learning. And I give Jesus all the glory and honor for my life. Because if it wasn't for Him, I would not be here. If He wasn't the price that He paid, I wouldn't be here. None of us would be here, able to meet with God. Amen. I want everybody to stand to your feet and let's raise our hands. Let's just take a moment to begin to pray. If you can pray in the Spirit, just pray for me. Just pray in the Spirit. The fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. So while you are praying, pray fervently, pray with passion, pray with excitement pray with an unction just pray with everything that's inside of you Don't stop praying, keep going. If you don't know how to pray in the Spirit, allow the Holy Spirit to fill you tonight. Because if you are not filled with Him, you are missing the most important key, who is our helper. You are missing the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you for your presence that is here. Jesus, we thank you that you are here with us. Holy Spirit, thank you. Father, we love you. Jesus, we love you. We give you all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. Holy Spirit, we love you. And I thank you that you are here with each and every single one of us. Thank you that you came to be our helper. Father, and I pray that as everyone goes home, begin to prepare their hearts, begin to prepare their spirits for the encounter that you have for them tomorrow. Let them not leave here with the same mindset, with the same thinking, but renew them and refresh them so that when they go home and come back tomorrow, that they are ready to meet with you. I thank you for this. Amen and amen. If everybody, you can give Jesus a shout of praise.